Welcome to the course on an introduction to information theory. So, in this lecture we are going to talk about an iterative algorithm to compute channel capacity and rate distortion function and this is known as Plehat Erimoto algorithm named after these two scientists who independently came up with this algorithm. So, first we will talk about this algorithm in a general setting and then which so we will be talking about alternatory max optimization algorithm and then we will talk specific about this Blehut Arimato algorithm. In particular we will talk about how we can use this algorithm to compute channel capacity and uh, how we can use this algorithm to compute rate distortion function. Now, for this lecture we are going to use the book by Raymond Young on information theory and network coding. This is chapter 9 of that book. So, as we know for a discrete memoryless channel with transition matrix given by P of y given x, channel capacity is given as maximum mutual information between the input x and the output y and the maximization is taken over all input distribution. Here I am denoting the input distribution by r of x. x is the input to the channel and y is the output to the channel. Now, as we know this expression for channel capacity is what we call a single letter characterization. Now, we know that this channel capacity depends on the transition uh, matrix of the channel. It does not depend on the block length of the code used. And when the input alphabet size and the output alphabet size that is finite, in that case this computation of the channel capacity is nothing but a finite dimensional maximization problem. Now, we know that except for some simple specific cases, we do not have a closed form expression for channel capacity. So, to compute channel capacity in general, we will have to resort to let us say a numerical computation or something like that. Now, Blair Terimoto algorithm is a algorithm to iteratively compute the channel capacity and rate distortion function. Similarly, if we look at the rate distortion function, this is defined as minimum mutual information between the source alphabet and the reproduced alphabet which is denoted by x hat and this minimization is taken over all conditional distribution of uh, q of x hat given x such that the expected single letter distortion is less than some quantity d. So, q of x is the conditional distribution and of x hat given x and q of x x hat uh, denotes the joint distribution which satisfy the distortion constraint which is given by this here. Okay. Now, here also this is a single letter characterization. It does not depend on the block length of the rate distortion code, it only depends on the random variable x. So, when the source alphabet and reproduced alphabet size is finite, again this becomes a finite dimensional minimization problem and again here in most of the cases we do not have a closed form expression for the rate distortion function. So, to compute rate distortion function then we will have to resort to some sort of a numerical uh, method. So, this gives a motivation to study an iterative algorithm to compute this rate distortion function and channel capacity. So, first let me talk about 
this algorithm in a general setting. Uh, so, I am going to talk about alternating optimization algorithm and then we will come to the specifics of Blehert Arimoto algorithm. So, let us say you want to compute double supremum. So, you have a function f over u 1 and u 2, uh, u 1 belongs to a convex set a 1 and u 2 belongs to a convex set a 2. Now, you want to call compute a double supremum of this function f which is a function of u 1 and u 2 and this function f is a real function defined over a 1 cross a 2. The function is also bounded from above. So, uh, this is function is upper bounded by some quantity finite quantity and it is continuous also its partial derivatives uh, it has continuous partial derivatives defined. So, these are the conditions on the function f. Now, assume for all u 2 belongs belonging to this convex set a 2 there exist mapping c 1 u 2 which belongs to this convex set a 1 such that f of c 1 u 2 and u 2 is equal to maximization of this function f of u 1 dash u 2 where u 1 dash belongs to this convex set a 1. Similarly, let us assume that for all u 1 belonging to this convex set a 1 there exist a unique mapping c 2 u 1 which belongs to this convex set a 2 such that this condition is satisfied that f of u 1 and c 2 u 1 is equal to maximizing of this function f of u 1 and u 2 dash where u 2 dash belongs to a 2. So, then we can write this double supremum problem as we are computing a supremum of f of u where u is this uh, and we are computing this over u which belongs to this Cartesian product of a 1 times a 2. So, let us state the alternating optimization algorithm. So, let us say at some time k u k is given by u 1 k and u 2 k. So, we start off with some initial at time k equal to 0 we start with initial value of u 1 which is which I am denoting by u 1 0. So, let this be an arbitrarily chosen vector and it belongs to this convex set a 1 then u 2 0 is given by c 1 u 1 0 and this belongs to this convex set a 2. In general for k greater than equal to 1 we can define this u k by u 1 k and u 2 k where u 1 k is nothing but c 1 of u 2 k minus 1 and u 2 k is c 2 u 1 of a time k. Now, let this function f which is basically this at k th iteration. So, we are denoting this value by this is nothing but function f at k th iteration is f of u k which is f of u 1 k and u 2 k. Now, this is greater than e equal to f of u 1 k and u 2 k minus 1 which in turn is greater than f of u 1 k minus 1 and u 2 k minus 1. Now, these two relations follow from 
these two properties. So, we have this property and this property. So, for all u 2 belongs belonging to a 2 there exists a unique c 1 u 2 which belongs to this convex set a 1 such that f of c 1 u 2 u 2 is nothing but maximizing this function f of u 1 dash u 2 when f u 1 dash belongs to a 1 and similarly there exist for all u 1 belonging to a 1 there exist a unique c 2 u 1 such that this relation holds. So, because of these two properties we know that this two hold. Now, so what we have shown then is f of k f as a function of k as a f is basically a non decreasing function. So, f is a non decreasing function. So, f of k is a non decreasing function and remember it is bounded from above that was one of the property of f of k. If you go back this function f of f is bounded from above. Okay. So, f of k is non increasing, but it is bounded from above. So, what does that mean? It means that f of k must converge must have a limit as k goes to very high. So, f of k converges to some finite quantity. Now, if we replace this function f by minus f, then in this problem, if in this problem, if we replace this f by minus f, what we get is a double infimum of this function f. Where we have similar conditions that f has to be continuous, uh, partial derivatives have to be continuous, f is bounded from below, then this double infimum can be computed also using this alternating optimization algorithm. Now, this form we are going to use for computing the rate distortion function whereas, this form we are going to use to compute channel capacity. So, let us first prove a lemma that we are going to use uh, and then we will state our blehert arimoto algorithm for computation of channel capacity. So, r of x is my input distribution and p of y given x is my transition probability. Uh, now, let r of x times p of y given x be the joint distribution on x and y such that r of x is greater than 0. So, it's r of x is strictly positive and let q be the transition matrix from y to x. Then what this lemma says is as follows r of x multiplied by p of y given x log of q of x by y divided by r of x. If we sum it over all x and y and we maximize over all q then this is nothing but summation over all x and y of r x p y of x log of q star x given y divided by r x, where this q star of x given y is given by this expression. And this maximization is over all q such that q of x given y is 0 if and only if p of y given x is 0. Okay. So, what we are saying is if you try to maximize this over all q then this is basically given by this expression where the expression of q star is given here. Okay. So, we are going to use the divergence inequality to prove this result. So, let us see how we are going to prove this. Let w y 
is given by this expression r of x prime p of y given x prime summation over all x prime. So, this is nothing but this one this term ok. Let, let us denote this by w y. Now, without loss of generality we will assume that for all y p of y given x is greater than equal to 0 for some x and since we will consider a strictly positive r. So, r, r greater than equal, uh, greater than 0. So, then w of y will be greater than 0 for all y and if w of y is greater than 0 you can go back and see if this is greater than 0 and these are greater than 0 then this will be also greater than 0. Now, from this, this is my w y right. So, I can write w y times q star of x given y to be equal to r of x p of y given x. So, that is what I am writing here. All right. Next, just recall we want to show that if we maximize this over all q, this is given by this expression where q star is this, right. So, the way we are going to show that this is the maximum value of this function maximize over q, we are going to prove this by showing that this minus value of this function for some other q that is always greater than equal to 0. If we can show that then we have proved that q star x given y is the one that maximizes this function. So, what we are going to show is this function evaluated at q star minus this function evaluated at q. Now, this is so if we take this is a common term if we take this out this is a common term here. If we take this out we get log of q star x given y divided by r of x minus log of q of x given y divided by r of x. So, this can be written as log of q star x given y by q of x given y. Now, we just now showed that this term is nothing but w y times q star. So, if we plug in that value here, we get this expression. Now, this term does not depend on x. So, let us bring it out. So, we have this term summation over x and this term summation over y. Now, you can see this particular term can be written as divergence of q star and q. Now, we know that divergence between two distribution p and q is greater than equal to 0 and since w y is also greater than 0. So, this whole thing will be greater than equal to 0. So, then what we have shown is this function evaluated at q star that has the maximum value. So, we have proved this result this lemma which says if you try to maximize this over all q then this is the maximum value where q star is given by this expression. 
we state that for a discrete memoryless channel the capacity is given by this expression where maximization is taken over all q such that q of x given y is 0 if and only if p of y given x is 0. So, let us prove this. So, we will first consider a strictly positive distribution of r. Let mutual information between x and y let us denote by i of r p where r is the input distribution and p is my channel transition probability. Now, capacity can be given as maximum mutual information and maximization over all input distribution r. Now, let r star achieves capacity and if r star is greater than 0, then we can write this as maximizing mutual information over r greater than equal to 0. This becomes maximizing mutual information when r is greater than 0 and from the definition of mutual information, we can write this as in this particular way. Okay. And this is nothing but supremum of r greater than 0 maximizing over q of this function. Now, in case r star is not strictly positive, then since mutual information is continuous in r, so for any epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta such that the Euclidean distance between r and r star is less than delta, then this relation or the c capacity minus mutual information is less than epsilon. So, in particular there exists an input distribution r tilde greater than 0 such that this relation holds. So, capacity is given by maximizing mutual information over all input distribution r. This can be written as this is greater than equal to supremum of r p and supremum over all r greater than equal to 0. And since r tilde, r tilde this, this, this can be written as greater than equal to mutual information between some distribution r tilde p and since r tilde satisfies this relation uh, satisfies this condition. So, we can write that uh, this mutual information between r tilde p will be c minus epsilon. This last thing follows from the fact that there exists an r tilde which satisfies this equation. So, we have this. Now, if we let go epsilon to 0, we get the expression for capacity as this. Now, let us see how we are going to use alternating optimization algorithm to compute the channel capacity. So, first we are going to choose a strictly positive input distribution which I am denoting by R 0. Of course, is this belongs to this convex set A 1 and we define Q of 0 or in general Q of k by this relation. Why? If you recall, we have proved a lemma earlier and this lemma is this. What does this lemma says? The maximum value of this function maximizing over all q is given by this, where q is given by this expression. So, given an r, we should find q in this particular fashion because this will maximize my this function over all q. So, this is 
how r and q they are related. So, that is why we start off with some initial uh, arbitrary input distribution which is strictly positive r 0 and then we can we, we have to find q 0 for that we are going to use this. Now, once you know q 0 you need to find r 1 and how do we find r 1 or in general for any k greater than equal to 1 we need to find r at time k. So, we need to find an r which belongs to this convex set a 1 that maximizes a function for a given q. Now, remember in addition to maximizing this function we also have some constraints on r and what are those constraints? First one is sum of probabilities should be 1 and the probabilities are basically greater than, greater than 0. So, these are the two constraints we have. So, we want to find the optimal value of r given these two constraints. So, how do we proceed? So, we will take help of this method of Lagrange multiplier. So, we will define this, this is my objective function, this is my constraint related to the fact the summation of this r of x is 1. Now, at the moment I am ignoring this positive positivity constraint that is because later on we will see then we when we compute the value of, of r of x uh, that is already taken care of. So, so this is Lagrangian. Now, the next step is to find the optimal value I, I differentiated with respect to r of x. So, when I differentiate with respect to r of x I get this summation over y p of y given x log of q given y minus log of r of x minus 1 minus lambda. Now, when we equate this to 0 and when we collect terms what we get is log of r x is equal to summation over y p of y given x log of q x given y minus 1 minus lambda or in other words I can write r of x in this particular way. Now, we need to find lambda right. Now, we know that summation of r x of x over all x that is equal to 1. So, if we put in that constraint we get the value of r of x to be this ok. Now, note that here we are taking product over all y here we are taking product over all y we have this term which is greater than 0 we have this term which is greater than 0. So, r of x is going to be greater than 0. So, earlier we have not taken this positive positivity constraint, constraint but you can see that that r of x which comes out is positive is greater than 0. So, that is implicitly taken care of. Now, so this is the optimal value of r of x in terms of q of x. Earlier we have computed the optimal value of q of x in terms of r of x. So, at k iteration basically I can write r of k x as product over all y q for k minus 1 time x given y this to the power p of y given x divided by summation of this. So, note now we started with an arbitrary strictly positive distribution of r r 0 we plug that in to get q of 0. Now, once we get q of 0 we plug the value of q of 0 here to get 
r of 1. Now, once we get r of 1, we are going to make use of, once we know r of 1, we are going to make use of this expression to get q of 1. Now, once we get q of 1, we will make use of this to get r of 2. So, that is how we are, that is how we are proceeding. So, this you can see this is an iterative, an iterative way we are. Uh, so, so these vectors r k and q k are defined in order. We first start with arbitrarily uh, r of 0, which belongs to this convex set a 1 and then we use r 0 to compute q 0, then we use q 0 to compute r 1 and so on. So, you can see that each vector in the sequence is a function of previous vector except r of 0 initial value. Okay. Now, I am not showing you the proof, but it can be shown that r of k belongs to this convex set a 1 and q of k belongs to this convex set a 2. This can be proved using mathematical induction. Now, once we define, uh, once we determine r of k and q of k, we evaluate the function f at kth iteration, which is given by this. Now, the next obvious question is, is this function guaranteed to converge and when will it converge? So, when f is a concave function, this function will converge to the expression for capacity. So, next we are trying, we will show that this expression for channel capacity, this function is a concave function. So, to show that this algorithm converges to channel capacity, we are going to show that this function that we evaluated, this is a concave function of r and q. So, let us consider two ordered pair r 1 q 1 and r 2 q 2 and let lambda be an variable between, between 0 and 1. Now, using log sum inequality, we can write lambda times r 1 x plus 1 minus lambda times r 2 x log of lambda times r 1 x plus 1 minus lambda times r 2 x divided by lambda times q 1 x given y plus 1 minus lambda times q 2 x given y. This is less than equal to lambda times r 1 x log of r 1 x by q 1 x given y plus 1 minus lambda times r 2 x log of r 2 x divided by q 2 x given y. So, this follows from log sum inequality. Now, we are going to take the reciprocal. So, uh, reciprocals of these logs. So, what you will notice is so, what I did was, I just took a reciprocal of these log terms. If you take reciprocals of this log term, this less than equal to term will become greater than equal to and that is what happened here. So, I took the reciprocals of the uh, logarithm. So, then this log of this by this is now greater than equal to lambda times r 1 x log of q 1 divided by r r 1 plus 1 minus lambda r 2 log of q 2 r 2. So, I essentially took reciprocals of these logs, log terms and this term which was earlier less than equal to is now greater than equal to. Next, I multiply both sides by p of y given x and sum over all x and y. So, if I do that, 
what I get on the left hand side is function evaluated at lambda times r1 plus 1 minus lambda times r2 and lambda times q1 plus 1 minus lambda times q2 is greater than or equal to lambda times function evaluated, evaluated, evaluated at r1 q1 plus 1 minus lambda times function evaluated, evaluated at r2 q2 and we know from the definition of concavity that if function value at this is greater than or equal to expected value of the function basically this is the condition for concavity. So, this shows that the function f is a concave function. So, hence we have shown that when we iteratively compute r and q as key increases basically f evaluated at kth iteration will tend towards the expression for channel capacity and this is uh, Blair Arimoto algorithm for computation of channel capacity. Now, Blair Arimoto algorithm for rate distortion function is very very is, is sim, is similar. Uh, we will just quickly browse over the results. So, we know the rate distortion function looks like this typically we have something like this you have this is rate this is distortion. So, this is maximum distortion d max. So, uh, r 0 typically greater than equal to 0 or otherwise r 0 r d is 0 for d greater than 0. It is a typically a strictly decreasing function as we saw basically r of d typically is like this or something like that. Now, we also know that this rate distortion function is a convex function. So, then for any s which is negative there exists a point on this rate distortion curve for d between 0 to d max such that the slope of the tangent to the rate distortion curve at that point is equal to the slope s. So, what I am saying is if you have a rate distortion function let us say something like this this is my d max. So, there exists a point on this rate distortion curve such that the slope of the tangent to this curve at that point is equal to s. Something has here and let us denote this point s. So, this is my d of s and this is my r of d of s. For s less than 0, the tangent to the rate distortion function has slope s and its y intercept is given by r of d s minus s times d s. Now, let i p q denotes the mutual information between x and x hat and d p q denotes the expected distortion where p is the distribution for x and q is the transition matrix from x to x hat. For any q then this is a point in this rate distortion region and the line with slope s is going to pass through this point. So, this will give a y intercept of this. Now, since this rate distortion curve defines the boundary of the rate distortion region, we can write 
this as minimum minimizing mutual information minus s time this distortion minimizing over q. So, for each s less than equal to 0, we can find a q of x such that this is minimized. So, we can find a q s that will achieve this minimum value. So, then a line passing through this point is going to give me a tight lower bound on the R D curve. And if I do this for all S S, I essentially can trace out this rate distortion curve. Okay. Now, let us talk about an iterative way to compute the same. So, without proving, I am just stating the lemma that I am going to use. The proof of this lemma is all on the similar lines as the proof that we did for lemma for computation of channel capacity. So, let p of x q of x hat given x be the joint distribution on x and x hat such that q is strictly positive and t is the distribution on x hat such that t is also strictly positive. Then minimizing this over all t is given by this expression where t star is this. Now, again this proof is very similar to we can use divergence inequality to prove this result. I am not stating it here again. Again very similar to the proof that we did for channel capacity. So, if now this is mutual information and this is my distortion. So, so basically R of d s minus s of d which is nothing but minimizing this over all q. Now, this mutual information is given by this and this is given by this term. Okay. So, then I can write R of d s minus s of d s is basically this term. Now, we are going to use alternative minimization algorithm to compute this. So, we start with a strictly positive matrix Q of 0. The next step is we need to find t at time at, at iteration index k and this is given by this. Now, this follows from the lemma that minimum value of this minimum over all t is given by this where the value of t star is given by this expression. So, given a q you know what is the next t. Now, once you find t you need to then next find q of q of 1 at q at index uh, iteration index 1. Now, how do I find q in general for k? Again this process is very very similar to what we did. We want to maximize this with some constraints and what are these constraints? We have this positivity constraint q of x at given x is greater than 0 and we have the sum of probabilities adding up to 1. So, we will again follow the method of Lagrange, Lagrange. So, we will form the Lagrangian objective function plus lambda times this constraint. We will initially ignore the positivity constraint and later on we will show that uh, Q comes out to be positive. So, that condition is explicitly taken care. So, without showing you the details of this uh, uh, expression, I am just directly writing the expression for 
q for iteration index k and again this is exactly same procedure that we followed for when we compute computed r of at some iteration index x for computation of channel capacity. So, then if there exists a point r of d s d s on this uh, rate distortion curve such that the slope of the tangent at that point is equal to s then what we will see is as k increases this converges to r of d s and d s and if otherwise you will see that this term will be arbitrarily close to a segment on this rate distortion curve where slope is equal to s when k is sufficiently large and the condition for convergence is so this function has to be convex function. So, I am not proving this uh, again very similar proof to what we did for the computation of channel capacity. So, to summarize we have given two example one for the case of computation of channel capacity we have shown how we can iteratively compute it and similarly for the rate distortion function uh, as we said we initially start off with some uh, strictly positive uh, value of q of 0 and then we use that to compute t of 0 and then we use t of 0 to compute q of 1 and we process that in, in, in an iterative fashion to compute the rate distortion function. So, with this I will conclude this lecture. Thank you.